Hey, we're back here with the 1981 Honda Goldwing GL1100. Got it pulled forward onto a clean blue paper tarp. Today we're going to be getting at those head gaskets. I don't think the head gaskets are wrong, but if you watched the previous video, um, the intakes were full of rust. I want to make sure that none of that rust is inside, or at least uh, to a manageable point. So I'm going to head and drain the coolant and I've removed the spark plugs. We're going to move on to removing the radiator and then we'll set the top dead center and start getting at the timing stuff. Get the timing belts off and take the heads off. So that's what we got planned for today. Let's get started. Alright so I've already got the upper clamp off the radiator hose going to the thermostat housing. This one's going to stay in place. And we're just going to undo the two 8mm bolts for the water pump cap right here, and this whole thing will go with it. There we go. This upper radiator hose, even with the uh, hose clamp loose, is still stuck there. So if you just grab it with some long needle nose or whatever other pliers you got around, what you want to do is just get enough grip on that hose to give it a little twist and break it free. That'll help slide it off. But you're going to have to find a position for you where you have enough room to swing. There we go, it's free now. There we go. Alright, on to the mounting bolts. There are two mounting bolts on the lower, both 10mm, one here and one there. This one I'm just going to put back in place for now while I undo the uppers. Just give it a couple, couple threads there just to hold the weight. And then I'll move you up top. Same thing up here. Two 10 millimeters. These are cap nuts, not bolt, bolts. Sorry. Now behind the radiator here, we need to undo the fan connector, and uh, that's going to be really hard for me to show on camera, but I can show you where it's at. And that connector, right there. So, like I said, I don't think I can fit my hands in there and still have something for you to see, so I'm going to undo that, and I'll bring it back as we drop the radiator. So now with everything unhooked. I should be able to just spin that bolt out, kind of pivot and drop the whole thing.
Next up is timing covers. There's four bolts, one here, one there, one there, and then one right out of your view behind the frame rail there. One timing cover. The belt looks okay. Don't worry, it'll be getting replaced anyway. Let's go to the other side. This belt looks also to be in pretty good shape, but definitely has more tension than, than the right side. Makes you wonder if somebody's been in here also, but those we'll find out as we keep going. So now we need to move to the back side of the motor and take off a couple covers so we can rotate the engine and line up our timing marks on the camshaft. Along with the T1 mark on the flywheel. So we are after that bolt there. More of a cap, really. And the bolt that's behind that is what we're gonna gonna turn. I'm also gonna go ahead and remove this so I don't have to worry about hitting that. Also, uh, 12 mm 12 millimeter. Now a, a 12 millimeter offset wrench works great here, but I don't think I have one of those handy. So I'm gonna be using. Just the 12 millimeter socket. Always go clockwise only. You don't want to loosen that bolt. I'm going to position you at the flywheel viewing port, which I've already removed, so you can see that T1 mark come around. All right, and hopefully that's close enough for you, because that's as close as I can get. So. Quite sticky in the rotation. There's F, and there's T. And both of the marks on the cam camshaft gears are lined up with the index marks on the case. So that's exactly where we want to be. Yeah, that looks beautiful. I don't, I don't think anybody's messed with this timing. Because if they did, judging by everything else they've messed with it would be a lot farther off than that so that's promising all right next I'm gonna undo the valve covers and we're loosening the valve tappets 
all the way. That was one trick I picked up reading around online. So we'll do the left side first. Let me position you for that. Okay, and just like the timing covers, these are all 10 millimeter also. It should come off now. Maybe it just needs a little smack. There it goes. Pretty clean inside there. It's a good sign. Me anyway. This is that part I like. Everything starts smelling like really old motor oil. So we'll loosen these valve tappets and move to the other side and do the same thing there. And this one's still a little tight, but Definitely not as tight as it was, so that'll help. Let's move on to the other side. And I'm switching to the air ratchet because this is getting tedious. Everything looking normal so far. Time to check the book, see what's next. Alright, I guess now it's time to pop those tensioner bolts and remove the belt. I need a different tool to get on that one. Be right back. Okay, back with a wrench. Yeah, that's actually going the right way because it wants to close that valve that it's fighting against. Oh, that's, that's always scary, but in this case I know it's, it's closing the valve. All the other ones were already closed. So, shouldn't be any issues there. Just a matter of turning it a little bit. When we go to put the 
belt back on. So there's one belt out of the way. Always a little nerve wracking for me doing this the first time on any vehicle, messing with the timing. So let me get you positioned over on the left side of the motor and I'm going to label this belt right. Same thing on this side, just pop them loose. That's that for timing belts. I don't think there's a whole lot left as far as getting ready to take the heads off. Those rollers feel nice and smooth. Good and tight too as far as the bearings. I'll take a closer look at them and at least get new springs all right let's remove the exhaust this doesn't fight too much You know what? I'll just bring you back when all these are unbuttoned. All right. So, skip past a bunch of boring stuff for you. I dropped the exhaust. There's two bolts behind each of the camshaft pulleys on each side. Those can be a little bit tedious to get to. Now we're going to pull the rocker assemblies. Getting real close to pulling these heads off. So, gonna bust all these loose. It says tap lightly with a soft mallet, so it goes nothing. I uh, guess I skipped that part because I don't have points. The book mentions a points cover. Figured that would be just a cover and it wouldn't get in the way of anything, but go ahead and remove it anyway. side camshaft out. Sorry, I forgot to hit the record button when I started this side. My apologies. Ooh. 
Here we go. I think we are finally ready to pull the heads. But we'll double check the book first before we screw something up. Okay, so there's one 10 millimeter bolt right here, and then our six head bolts. So, I'm going to go in the reverse of the torque sequence. So, All right, there it is. Those are all loose. I'm gonna go eat dinner. Make some space on the workbench for the heads and all the head bolts and everything, so you can keep everything clean. And I'll be back with you in a bit. Now, while you are gone. I drain the rest of the oil out. I've covered the exhaust with a grocery bag. Just keep that from getting all nasty. And I've cleaned up some space on the workbench for the heads and the head bolts and everything else. This guy I was told not to remove it unless it's leaking because the gasket I guess is a pain to find and I'm just gonna follow that advice. Now I'll just begin gingerly tapping this thing off. There it is. Well, the head gasket on this side looks to have been intact. But the rust did get in, but I think there's plenty of carbon on there to keep it from from being on the actual metal. So far that's all on the surface, but what does that board look like is the question.
this one looks really good. Well, I guess there's nothing to do but get the other side off so that we can rotate this and know kind of what the other side looks like. So we get you set up over there. Same thing on this side. There's that 10 millimeter bolt down there. Sorry about that, I had to switch you to the GoPro. Then. Oh wait, no, we need to, we need to cover that exhaust, sorry. Okay, hammer time. Well, <laughs> you're right in the way, so I'm going to keep patiently tapping at it. I'll bring you back for the moment of truth. <sighs> Man, that was a lot of banging. Got a pretty decent gap all the way around now. So close. Oh. That's straight water. Rusty water. I don't like the looks of that, but The chances is this piston really clean too. I wonder if it had a head gasket issue. signs of issues no obvious obvious blowouts this is what the what the head looks like 
this mic this mic thing up. Let me hook the jumper pack up to it. I'm gonna dry this one out first, and then we'll turn it over and see what the rest of the boards look like. Well, hopefully y'all can see that well enough, but I think this is the worst one. There's like a few small rings and a few little rust spots, or maybe just gunk spots. It just comes off with my fingernail. And behind that, you can still see the cross hatching on the rest of the board, nice and smooth, and still showing the honing marks. This one. And it's still spitting out some more water. This one's got a couple rings in it, but I think that stuff will clean up. It still feels really smooth. It's wet, I can deal with. It's not that rusty. So I think this will clean up nicely. The other side's much of the same. So I'm going to clean this up, I'm going to go inside and order everything I need to put this engine back together, head gaskets, timing belts, a couple other small odds and ends gaskets, probably the camshaft seals too, while everything's out, just do it, and never have to worry about it again, not to do a lot of cleanup, obviously. I think it'll, it'll be a get it running and change the fluids like a couple times. Run it to temperature, change it, run it to temperature, just flush everything out. And so I think that's it for this one. For y'all, I'm going to be out here cleaning it up for a while. And I'll see you when we have some parts. Thanks for joining me. Catch you next time.